U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry uh, is in Cairo today to try to uh, make amends with the Egyptian government after they cut off aid to Egypt, and then Egypt got up and announced to the world that they would be looking to diversify their uh, military needs. Right now, the U.S. is Egypt's primary military and weapons source, but they have visited other places such as uh, China and have talked to Russia as well. Um, but for the most part, the United States has been their primary source for many, many years. In fact, since Anwar Sadat made a, a uh, peace treaty with, e uh, with Israel, they have been with the West and, uh, and have made them their supplier for that length of time which would be decades. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that Egypt isn't going anywhere anytime soon. If they made a change, it would take years upon years, decades, for them to change over to, from a new supplier. So even though they have threatened to move on to other suppliers, or the case may be, it still would take many, many, many years. And probably, like I said, uh, with, the, with the learning curve, would, would, would probably fall into decades before they could finally change over. But I don't foresee that being the case, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. The United States is still the best weapons supplier in the world with the most sophisticated equipment, and they do supply most or, or much of the Middle East with arms, and that would include Israel and Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and a few others. But if Egypt were to uh, change to a different supplier, that would be a game changer in, uh, with reference to the Psalm 83 war scenario. So if you are a believer in the Psalm 83 war, and that is going to take place at some point in time in the near future, you still don't have much hope that that will take place because, as I said, if Egypt were to change over to a different supplier, it would be decades before they would actually be fluent in that uh, particular military system. And Israel is a little bit worried as well that uh, Egypt may indeed break the peace treaty if the United States does not act to reinstate the uh, financial and military aid that they uh, supply uh, Egypt to the tune of somewhere around a couple billion dollars a year. Now I know many are saying, you know, in the world would be saying, well, why in the world are you giving away two billion dollars a year to a country that we don't even care about? Well, they are the largest uh, Islamic country in the uh, Middle East, and it is a type of payment for the, the uh, prospect of continuing to have peace in the region. That region is definitely a tinderbox that could go off if the balance of power is swayed one way or the other. So the United States, instead of placing expensive troops and uh, other military uh, assets in the Middle East, they would rather just pay a couple billion dollars here and a couple billion dollars there to, to Israel and to Egypt to keep the balance of power uh, in line and to keep the peace treaty underway. And let's face it, that would have been a good idea for Iraq and a few of the other places as well, since we've spent almost a trillion dollars or more on the wars uh, both in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan over the last uh, oh near 10 years or so. So I consider the payment of a few, like I said, a few billion dollars here and a few billion dollars there of aid money uh, to the Middle East, to, to certain Middle Eastern countries to keep the peace, uh, a very cheap insurance policy. And frankly, if we had to pay more, it would be worth it to do so just to keep uh, that region peaceful. Let's face it, you know how much money it takes or it costs uh, uh, Americans every time a blow up takes place in the Middle East in, in, in gas alone? In just in recent months or recent days alone, where gas has uh, plummeted to the lowest prices in, in a long time. And this is due to the fact that Iran and the U.S. are in the process of possibly making a, some type of peace agreement. Egypt is now beginning to, be to become un in a controlled state and getting back to somewhat of, of normalcy, even though it looks like they are reverting back to the old guard. And on the Syria front, it looks like that the United States is going to keep out of the Syrian conflict. So many of these things together spell cheaper oil and gas prices. And I want to challenge you to do something. Next time that you something happens in the Middle East that seems to be noteworthy as far as a flare up or the case may be, take a look at the gas prices and see where they head. You can bet your life that gas prices are heading upward every time a flare up or some type of rumor 
uh, services where there may be some bleep, uh, blip in the uh, peace talks or whatever the case may be. And that goes for Egypt, Syria, uh, Jordan, um, Saudi Arabia, or any, of, any uh, or any of these nations part of the OPEC group. Now on to Russia. A big goal of Russia's is to squeeze out the United States, get them out of the Middle East as quickly as possible, because it is their goal to take over much of the Middle East in the near future. And we know that to be the true end because the fact that as Ezekiel 30 and 39 states that that's what Russia's goal will be. And you know, there's one thing that probably needs to be stated that just because it only states that Israel will be attacked by a conglomerate of nations uh, that will be led by Israel or by Russia doesn't mean that that's not just one of the, s the first steps uh, that the middle that uh, Russia is going to take. That very well could only be step one. The fear for many, in, especially in Saudi Arabia, is that if in fact Russia does attack Israel, uh, which the Bible states it will, um, that they could very well be next. And you know in Ezekiel 38 the, uh, that uh, Dedan, which is Saudi Arabia, does protest this particular march against Israel. And of course we know that Iran is involved in this attack, but there's another player who is part of NATO at this time, and that is Turkey will also. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to transpire, whether they will break off from NATO or whatever the case may be. But the, the Bible's clear that it will likely be Turkey that will be a part of this particular battle. But the point I'm making is I'd keep my eyes on what uh, Russia is going to be doing in the near future and what their strategy continues to be. Now, as far as the peace process going on in Israel, of course, we know that uh, there have been many uh, situations that both Israel and the Palestinians are basically uh, sabotaging this particular peace process. And of course they will continue to do so until the rapture takes place and then on into the start of the tribulation period where the Antichrist will come forth and he will finally make the peace. But it's coming. But don't expect any miraculous breakthroughs to take place in the near future until after the rapture takes place. I'm convinced that we're going to see the rapture take place. Then we're going to see the Antichrist come forward, and, and it will be then and only then that the breakthrough will take place. But I do not expect a major war to take place. Oh, yeah, Israel could attack Iran. But with the facts on the ground, don't expect Saudi Arabia and some of these other nations that surround Israel, their neighbors, to come attacking them just because they've attacked Iran. The vast majority of them look for the day that Israel destroys their nuclear facilities. So they're certainly not going to jump on board with Iran after, this, after Israel destroys uh, Iran's nuclear facility. Because Iran is a major threat to the nations, to Israel's enemies, or sorry, to Israel's neighbors as well. So until something major changes in the region, uh, don't look for Israel's neighbors to be attacking Israel anytime soon. The Arab Spring has put many of them in a place of weakness and not strength, and many of them uh, have domestic problems of their own to deal with. And believe it or not, many of the nations that you think are enemies of Israel who are speaking out loud that they're I enemies of Israel secretly are cooperating with Israel to bring about their own interests. And a case in point example is Turkey. Turkey over the, the, this weekend said that th they denied that they helped Israel in any way to coordinate an attack on Syria and uh, the weapons that were being transferred to Hezbollah. I guarantee you Turkey helped in coordinating that. But even though out loud they would never admit they were working with Israel because that's simply not something the Islamic world wants to hear. But secretly, Saudi Arabia is working with Israel, Egypt's working with Israel, uh, Jordan's working with Israel, and I guarantee you Turkey helped Israel coordinate that attack against uh, Syria and their weapons transfer to Hezbollah. Well, this, that's the end of my report, but i just like to say that if you've not accepted the Lord as Savior, your time is running out. You need to do that as quickly as possible. Uh, the Lord's coming back, uh, and when He does, it's all coming down. So if you have not accepted Jesus as Savior, do so today because one day your day is coming to an end in which you will either stand before him or uh, you will be left behind to go through the most horrible time period the world's ever known, known as the tribulation period. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.